The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Traditions Hour. And last week I was saying that was a pretty important week because of a number of aspects where there were V-shaped patterns that were going back to highs, all-time highs, I might mention, like the uh, semiconductors and the QQQs, the XLK, uh, the XLK, I think, has still just missed it by two cents. Let me just double check. XLK, yep, it made a 76.26 all-time uh, high, 76.27 all-time high in October, plunges to 57.57, 24% uh, decline, and then spirals back from 57.57 to 76.26 uh, five days ago, hasn't broken above. Uh, you get that close. There's a, there's a pattern that I used to call the Groucho, I, Groucho Marx eyebrows pattern. I don't know if anybody even knows who Groucho Marx was any, anymore. I particularly didn't. I didn't particularly like him very much. I just liked his eyebrows. He had these big, thick, bushy eyebrows. Um, and what I would do is I would get a pattern like this. I remember doing Master uh, Trader series years ago. We used to have these intensive. I had a three-day series. Uh, part one was... Uh, two days, and then part two was the third day, uh, more advanced. And I would draw in these eyebrows. Um, you know, you don't have to do that. I just I was a caricaturist two years ago, so this is something that I kind of like. Um, so uh, you've got the eyebrows comes down, the other schnoz, and it comes back again. So I'm looking at this, and I'm saying this is exactly where you'd find resistance. But I don't see it as more than shorter term resistance because. The MACD is still good. The stochastic's at 91% in the daily. The weekly chart, the MACD is still expanding, at least up until last week. I don't know what this week is. We've just begun this week. I suspect it's going to be pulling back a little bit, but it's still looking great. And the stochastic's at 94%. And the weekly chart, monthly chart is turning around. It actually is way, way weaker technically than it was when it made the all-time high at 76.26 in October of 2018. This is the S&P uh, Spider Select Tech Fund trading at 76.05, just barely off the, off the top. For four, five days, it's just been stuck in this narrow range. <sighs> the longer you stay here, the greater the chance that even if you make a slightly higher high, you're going to make a, you're going to take out the low that was made of 75.11 on the 4th. Um, and then probably test 74, 75, the 14 period moving average. But that doesn't make it weak. That just says just be a little careful here. It's going to be struggling. So that's that. Look at the QQQ uh, right here. 185.28 was the high yesterday. 187.53 is the all time high back in October. Another V shaped pattern. Took a little longer to get there, just like the XLK. But to get there is incredible. Look at this. V-shaped pattern in the weekly. Look at the MACD, strong, stochastic, a little weaker than it was uh, three weeks ago, but still 80, 94%. The on-balance volume is very strong, only in leg C, same as the price. I think this is going higher. But in the meantime, we could have a little digestive phase right here. Um, so this is very important. IDM has been, IWM, the Russell 2000 been laying, just made a peak D. Uh, underneath the previous peak, D of 159.50 back in February of this year, February the 25th, and way under the peak F top of 173.39. This is very different. This is, over two, this is nearly 20 points below. This is going to take a lot more work. So very interesting phase we're at. Oh, someone asked me, oh, IYT. This, this is the IYT is the iShares Dow Jones Transportation Average Index Fund. And you can see here that it broke out. It cannot be a peak G because it's gone to another peak. So it means that the 192.27 high of um, mid-March, pulling back to the 179.55 low of March the 25th, this breakout 
is really peak B, and that should go to a C and a D. It's the reason why we're long, and I didn't want to get out of any position. I, I wanted to try to keep it as long as possible. Also, the weekly has a left side, right side price time match with the Chapman Wave inside wedge uh, right there. Target resistance line, and that resistance line says that the two. One is right here, and that takes it to uh, 196, and we're at 191.64 right now. That would be leg D starts immediately, goes over 193.78, and then you've got three um, resistance points above. It might work a little hard to get that 91% in the stochastic. MACD is good, just starting to flatten out here. I like what I see. Now, the fact that we, we are short the Dow was based on many other factors. The fact that, oh, all right, you've got Boeing, that's helping the Dow to pull back. But you did get this beautiful little doji candle right here. Uh, I, I like that as a turning point. It might just be a turning point. It doesn't mean to say that it's going to break down. If there is a pullback below uh, 26,071 in the next couple of days, that would negate any chance of this being an alternate count. E slash A going to BCD. There is a chance that you get a Chapman Wave flat base restart. Now, what on earth was I looking at for the Chapman Wave flat base restart? Oh, I did my work on it. Everything was there. The picture in my mind is 100% clear, and I just can't recall what the chart name was. All right, I'll find it at some point. Um, hmm. Interesting. All right. Well, that's that. Let's just look at crude oil. Crude oil right now is trading at 64.02, down 38 cents on the continuous contract. What's really important about this continuous contract is that you've got not a one-to-one, -one, it's close to a one-to-one, -one, but you've got the Chapman Wave a propeller shaft pattern here with the oval. That's an extended stalk leg formation. It's different. What it implies is that the stalk leg says you're going to go a bit above, maybe to like that D, and then you're going to come back and retest the body of the oval pattern. But in this case, because you've extended almost one-to-one, -one, it says that you could pull back probably to the last trough of importance. That's at about 61.60s right there. Um, but you're probably going to be chopping around with slightly higher highs, higher recovery highs, that is, and in a kind of an oval, another oval pattern is possible. And the 200 period moving average of 65 point, 65 point 13, uh, 65.13 is the target in the 200 period moving average. We've gone to 64.79 so far. Let's see if we can actually tag that and then have a bit of a pullback. Next thing I want to look at is within the context of uh, the home builders, HGX, look at this. HGX is pulling back a little bit, made a peak C. If there's no new recovery high today, then I think it goes on to a D. But you've got left side, right side price time match going to, on a weekly basis, going to the week of the 3rd of May. And it's from the 310.36 high of 24th of August. So you go from just that level, let alone the all-time high of 369, down to 277 in December, but you did go 310 down to 227. Now you're back to 304. These V-shaped patterns are quite remarkable. Now, I just wanted to show you the, the uh, shorter term. Yep, the shorter term finally went to leg D in the five-minute chart. That was very important. It had a very elongated rectangle formation, building steam to the upside. I'll talk about that when we get back. Uh, Basel Chapman Tank Ignitions Hour because the Dow's up 140 uh, SP down for 140 SP down 10. I'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hello, folks, we're back. I was asked about HSY, which is Hershey. And Hershey, uh, the Hershey company trading at 160.08, down 19 cents. And the question was, um, where did it go? Uh, HSY, 118, uh, no, what was, it? Where, what was the question? Oh, HSY headed to 123, Basil. Uh, you know, I, I have seen the most unusual chart formations I can recall. That is, once in a while you get an unusual chart pattern, that's okay. But I have seen patterns that are so unusual, especially at tops. Look at this. I can draw a straight line right this, well, diagonal line right here. And that says um, there's a trend line that's going on. Could I make it a channel? If it's a channel, it becomes way more, it has more gravitas. So let's just see if this works. I don't think it does. I think it just cuts into it. Oh, yeah, that's good. Okay. So there's some gravitas for you because it's saying that Hershey's in a monthly chart has gone, if I take the low right here where the arrow is, and I go peak, and I, I really should do this differently, but I'm gonna do it this way, at least for now. I call this A and I call this B. It's really an alternative, it looks to me like it could be an alternative count from the previous, just finishing up uh, an expanding uh, wedge formation, but that doesn't matter. I'll just leave it as a B, because this did not take out the low. And now within that, you have another A, peak A and a peak B. And this peak B is under the previous high. That was the all-time high in this case of 117.79. Then you get the high with another peak B and another peak B, basically a peak B failure, right here at 116.49. Then it pulls back. It makes a very nice arch formation that I would have been drawing in and saying I'm a little confused why that's a B after a big... Um, 
reversal to the upside. At the same time, you've got your arch, and yet I can't even make a cup formation because this left side high is below that point. So you'd have to be a rising cup. I don't know how to explain that, but a rising cup. Okay, that's not the issue. The issue is we've just started another leg B. Now, this leg B, let me explain this. This is part of Chapman Wave. Um, I was going to say mythology. That would be a pity if I called it mythology. But this is part of the um, the wrap, part of what we look at in the Chapman Wave notation, the technicals. If you see this B, which is really a B minus, because there's another little B underneath it, that turns into a B minus because it broke down. However, it gets reconstituted, it becomes recalculated. If this peak A pulls back and starts this leg B as it's done right now, and this peak B, leg B, I'm sorry, it's a leg until it makes a peak, and so it's a leg right now, has it made a lower high? So it's still a leg B, but I, I call it a gray B because we're not sure yet exactly what the relationship is to all these Bs here. If this, this leg, right, this leg now in this monthly chart takes out by May, 116.49 doesn't stall there, but in fact continues to 117.79, 117.80, an all-time high. That reactivates both peak Bs, and this becomes not a leg B, but a leg C. It gets, I, I'm always conservative, so up, I upgraded to the next letter. Just to, I wanted to go, I wanted to just talk about this because enough people are doing Chapman Wave methodology that I, I need to always clarify things. So I'm going to, in the break, if I do get a chance, I'll try to notate it from the low that was made right here. And, and A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, E, F. That's what I thought. So that becomes a G right there. And this becomes, it can't be an H. There's no H. And it can't be a, um, an A to B because that has to, that would have been a failure pattern because that low right there at 82.41 is lower. And 82.42, I just recognize that. I didn't even measure it. I just said that's a higher low. That means A, B, A, B again. And now A, and we're in leg B, which will be a brand new leg C. The moment it crosses this high of 116.49, that becomes an official leg C to the upside. Hershey looking really good. I like it. So the question was, uh, what do I see? 123. I see that 118 is the resistance to Pierce in this particular phase. The moment it does that, yes, 121 to 123 becomes the target. It might stall a little bit before it gets there. Weekly chart is very strong. Daily chart, doji candle. Got to be careful. Uh, I don't want to take any time right now. I think this could be a D with a doji candle, but the main thing is stochastic or strong. So it's it, it's right on a very important moment at this particular stage. Okay. Now, uh, a couple of things I want to do. I want to do show you that the relationship, the gold, um, this is a good move off the 200 period exponential moving average. The MACD is trying its best once again to cross positive. We'll see if it does that. That's number one. Number two is the stochastic is very weak at 28%. Um, so we're going to have to watch that really closely. Number three is that the weekly chart, the technicals are still pretty darn weak. It doesn't mean to say the price can't move because sometimes price leads the technicals high and sometimes technicals give support to the trade. So the big thing is 113.16 uh, is the 200 period weekly uh, moving average, the orange line right there. If it closes above it by about Wednesday or Thursday, that's really good action because it means Friday you could see a close above the 200 period moving average for the first time in many weeks. And that would be a positive for gold. Now looking at silver, silver itself is trading at a high, is trading at 15.25, up 0.03, lousy action, good action from the low that was made just on a, on a four day basis, but still lousy action daily, weekly, monthly. So it's gonna be, you want, I want synchronicity. I want them all to be in sync, T-G-O-D-F. Is that, thank God, uh, opened uh, something? What is that? Uh, TG ODF. How do you remember a symbol like that? Five letters, distinctly different. Oh, look at that. So this is called green organic. Uh, 
Green organic Dutchman. Oh, this this has to be a, a pot stock, I'm sure. Tulip bulb mania. Uh, did I put that in? Oh, this is what? Wait, wait. Green something. I don't know why I put that in. There was a, a reason for putting that in. Tulip bulb mania. Meantime, back at the ranch, this is consolidating at three dollars and ten cents. I would say that it's probably got a little more to go. If it closes under three, it's going to retest the low of the eighth, which is a uh, no. Yeah, if it, that is three dollars. Yeah, it's going to be very important. It has to hold three dollars here because if it doesn't, the time time consuming uh, consolidation would use price and time. But if you look at MJ, which is the marijuana ETF, the alternative harvest, it's trading down forty nine cents to thirty five. 38, look at the way the 9 and the 14 period moving averages have been distinct. Uh, resistance levels, repellent zones to the downside since the 27th of May, way back at the 37 area. Yep, it's consolidating. I, I'm going to put this in yet to show you something that I think is going to take place. That's the consolidation phase. It could go for about another week or two. But look at this. GW, and boy, was I wrong. GWPH had a really good day yesterday. Uh, GWPH. Oh, and another gap up today at 169.91. But look at STZ. Was I wrong? I said I think GW is a better one. Skyrockets. I'll be back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. So today I'm busy looking at my uh, call-in list. Uh, nobody there yet. Yesterday I, I saw it just a tad late. So uh, 
I missed uh, with the, with the uh, Mike and Ormond Beach looking at the Dow, and I had mentioned that if it took out a certain level, it would go down further, and that's the way we're looking at the Dow consolidating. Um, so SDZ, here I am talking about this. I had an email, and the question was on SDZ, and I said, you know, I'm a little concerned that Constellation Brands has got all the, the spirits, beer, got everything, and now they're into um, the cannabis area. I'm not sure how they're going to be able to handle it. That my concern was that I would prefer, rather than add money to SDZ, I would split it between GWPH, which is GW Pharmaceuticals, medical marijuana company. And uh, from that point, uh, I'm, I'm not sure where we were, but perhaps the GW was trading at about a 170 or so. Well, it pulls back to the 158 area. 159 area today is up and it hits a high of 174 so that was that's nice but sdz just went it's like as if someone heard me and said you know what you think you know your charts watch this and then within two days it goes from that 175 174 area it powers up to 193.71, pulling back a little bit today. I don't know what it was. I don't know. What, it couldn't have been earnings. It must have been an announcement and a positive announcement. That's fabulous. That's exactly what I wanted to see. I just didn't think they would be able to handle it. I still think that the 236 high is going to be a high for some time. 150 low it doesn't have to be tested. But my thinking was that it would it wouldn't work. It's, it wouldn't get to uh, the 200-period moving average of 188. Uh, for a while because it was working through a bunch of constellations for constellation brand uh, i was wrong uh but i did say you know rather than add to it i'd be splitting the other one has done nicely nothing like this oh they've been selling off some of their spirits business oh all right so they're busy building up cash the uh, wait i thought i just did tgodf tgo did i go to a break or something you know, since it's early this morning, I couldn't even tell you how many dozens and dozens of notational charts I've done. Um, yeah, no, I'd say that it has to hold three because it, it could be, uh, it, it has to hold three because it could pull, pull back a little bit more. Uh, this is obviously, I mean, I'm not saying obviously because I know Green Organic Dutchman, my thinking is this is the, the old tulip bulb uh, mentioned and it's in the f same category. It's in the cannabis area. So I just give it a little time. Yep, this is the weekly chart is good. It's just building up momentum, but you've got to be prepared. Low price stock, $3.10. It could go to two ninety five. That's still not bad action. It's just a big percentage. Um, yes, and Kara, I did see Kara last night. I saw it go by up one or something. Um, now it's at 20.41. Uh, Kara is Kara Therapeutics, Inc. Very nice action. That's that's a lot better looking chart right now because it's already done weekly D. It's in an E. That raises the base of support to the 18s. Um, so that is good. Um, next thing we want you to do is uh, X, uh, BA. Yep, I'll look at BA. BA is down. It's making that uh, inverted, that V-shaped pattern, inverted V pattern like an arch. It's a 369 down five. It's just got big problems. <clears throat> I, I try to avoid it. We've used it as a trading vehicle uh, for option. I was going to go to a put site. I didn't get a chance to do that because it gapped down so quickly on Sunday, uh, on Monday morning. Uh, that, in fact, was my position that I thought, hey, now it's time to play the downside. Maybe it still is. I don't know. <clears throat> so that's that XLI. Yeah, come in the throat. <clears> throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> XLI trading at 75.87. This is the industrials. This is the S&P Select uh, Industrial Spider Fund. It went not. Look, the high that was made at 77.13 on the 25th of February pulls back to the 200 period moving day, uh, moving average, orange line right there to the 73s. And then it has a fabulous single leg A to the upside. That's not an I could call it an F slash A, like I could do this A, but I've got to go back to see where the peak, the trough that started the last move. Oh, right there. Okay. So that was an instant restart. I've got plenty of room. It's held at 200 period moving average. This is the, um, the H that goes to right there, the H that goes to the cup formation. 
pattern and using time is extended. Um, yeah. All right, the big question is, is this an F or is this an A? <laughs> F says, whoa, be careful. A says, go, oh, what do you mean careful? Just buy every single dip. Um, I have to say, be careful. Right now, Doji Candle gaps down. It almost has a second gap. I just be careful. It is in leg C, but only a fractional leg C uh, in the weekly chart. That says could be bumping into resistance. I think that we've got a, a choppy sideways move, slightly down, sl slightly lower highs, slightly lower lows. Just for the moment, that's what I'm looking at in the Dow and the industrials. So there's a trend line, different trend line to the uh, actual Dow, which made a new recovery high back in October. After the January high, the New York Stock Exchange made a January high last year, never, ever even tested it. <clears throat> so I'm watching this, and the industrials are telling me, be a little careful. Question about Caterpillar. So there's a very interesting article in um, Stocks and Commodities magazine. This is the April edition. And it's an interview, a very knowledgeable guy. Uh, he gets the interview when uh, the uh, editor, uh, here we go, when the editor of uh, Sucks and Commodities magazine, luck, luck, what's the name? I always forget her name. I should know it after all these decades and decades. This is, I'll find it right here and say it very clearly if I can. Jayanthi Gopalakrishman. And she does very nice interviews uh, with, with particular people that are really quite famous in the field. And she did this one with Linda Rashke. Now, Linda Bradford Rashke is someone I, I've, I've, I've known of for years. I've met her once, just briefly. I didn't actually have a conversation. I just met her. Uh, there were other people there, so I didn't like to barge and chat away because I've always found it extremely interesting. Anyway, she talks about patterns, and then um, she talks about models that describe uh, most probable behavior for the market and all that. And then within the same magazine, on, there's an article, I'm going to try to find it here, on someone who's talking about also very, he, he answers questions to the, uh, to the magazine. Yeah, question and answer, that's him. I think this is it. Let me see if I can find it. The reason why I wanted to bring it up is he's talking about, he talks about patterns, and he says, what's his name? I'll tell you his name right now. This is Kevin Davey. And then he talks about programming. He says, if you want to build algo strategies regardless of the market, you will need to program. And then what he does is he talks about programs as one thing and trading them as another, which is absolutely correct. But then he goes on to say, how do you really tell the difference between a chart that I'm looking at right now, like Caterpillar or GBTC? And that is the um, Bitcoin. Well, I don't find any difference at all. I don't care what it is. They have the same patterns. You wouldn't be able, could you tell this is Caterpillar or Bitcoin? I'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when 
when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So uh, I, my point here was that as far as I'm concerned, as long as you've got oscillation, as long as you've got peaks and troughs, a chart is a chart. I remember years ago, someone saying to me, uh, oh, they never trade as stocks in this particular country because everything looks like it's fixed. The banks control everything. And I, I said, okay. And then what I did is I took some of the charts from, that, from, from stocks of that country and I mixed them up with uh, U.S. stocks. And I, I said to him, Okay, you tell me which is which, uh, which are American stocks, which are foreign, you know, all that stuff. There's no way to tell. You couldn't tell. Now, I had a question, and the question is, um, what do you need to see to get bullish on Bitcoin for a trade? Well, I was looking at Bitcoin a while back, and I had drawn in this rectangle right here. And it was, oh, maybe somewhere around there it was gone. It went to peak C. And what I tend to do with rectangles is I shrink them. I don't expand them. I shrink them because within the rectangle, there's sometimes even a smaller trading band and then a smaller trading band. And then it expands and then it expands in one of the directions. But in the bigger context, what normally happens is it goes towards the upper part and then it just comes right back to the lower part. So I drew this in and fairly recently, I drawn in the midpoint that I thought was a midpoint because the particular candle we always look at, if it isn't a very obvious trough in a plumb line uh, where the left side number of bars to the downside could equal the same number of bars upside. So this is very interesting to me because here I am, I'm looking at this, and then there was some news, some uh, Morgan Stanley or so, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, someone said, oh, Maybe now is a good time uh, to to look at uh, Bitcoin because it couldn't have been J.P. Morgan Diamond Diamond doesn't ever look at that. So and whatever it was, and suddenly you got this big spike up. So I followed it, but I had coincidentally identified this bar right here as the low bar, and the left side, right side price time match said, if it expands, then I've got to look at the left side Doji candle right here of the 13th of November of 2018, 6.99, high 6.67, low, and just draw it across. Well, that comes in to the 11th, which is, what is today? Today's the 9, 10, 11, another two days time. Well, lo and behold, we hit a high today of 6.90, and I said 6.99, did I? Uh, 6.99, yeah. So we've got another day or so to go. That's number one. So the question is, what do I need to get bullish? 
First of all, charts repeat over and over. Let me show you what I mean. Look at the pattern. You see this elongated rectangle pattern? You see the breakout above it? Wait a minute. Haven't we seen that? Wasn't I talking about that very thing at the beginning of the show? Or was I, did I talk about it or did I? I can't remember if I was speaking about it or whether I was just drawing it in. Well, there it is. There's your rectangle, a long, long rectangle. And then suddenly you get the spike and it goes to what? It goes to a leg C. That could become a peak C because I could call that a, um, a phantom peak. I'm going to do that just because this is what I do in my own when I'm trading. I call this, if everything about it says that the MACD and stochastic look like they want to pull back, I like to be ahead of the game. So I would call this a, a, a potential leg D and then put a little uh, plus sign on it to say, be careful, that's where you've got to be cautious. And out of the blue, it starts to go down, hasn't broken down yet, but it starts to pull back. And that confirms, yep, that was a peak D. I had every reason to consider, even if it goes higher, it doesn't matter. It went under the, the um, four, nine, under the 14 and under the 200 period moving average. That's a magnet line, the 200 period moving average. That's why the price hasn't yet fallen. But I'm quite comfortable in saying that's a D. You can still get a real D. It doesn't matter. The MACD pulled back, stochastic pulled back. So here's the answer to the question. You see how everything relates? And I was just talking about it moments ago, whoever it was, whatever his name is, talking about um, you got to look at the characteristics of the, of the instrument you're trading. And I said, I can't disagree with what he's saying, but a chart is a chart. So Ke Kevin Davey, um, I, I just still think that you've got to look at the patterns and patterns repeat over and over because it's just a pattern of human nature. And there it is, peak D, you're pulling back. Why did I talk about this? See the rectangle formation? The question comes right back to this. GBTC trading at 6.64, down 19 cents. Where would I cons where would I consider coming into this? Well, first of all, for subscribers, I've said a long time ago. Until I feel very comfortable that we're making a low of con a, a, a low that is, we've made a low and maybe a retest that is very substantial for cushioning on the downside because you cannot trade this even overnight. It's trading, but you can't trade the GBTC as a fund. Uh, you can't trade it between anything other than 9.30 in the morning and 4 o'clock in the evening, uh, afternoon. So anything that happens in the evening, you're just kind of stuck. So I want a big cushion. So the, ne yep, the next time it comes back, if it does, it should at some point, at a test between 5.64 and the gap low of 5.52, made on the 2nd of April, and gets into that area, that's where I want to see how whether the weekly chart has improved enough, whether the monthly has improved enough, and then there could be a position that we take so for subscribers that says, now you can take it. I'll tell you exactly what your risk should be, even though it's an overnight position, because if it gets close to that on the downside, you don't want to even hold it overnight. But then I'm getting a chance to say, you know what? The weekly has improved enough that if there is a pullback uh, to whatever level I decide, but I'm, I'm looking at the low 56, uh, 564 to the five, say 530 area. That's where I probably would say, I think now I'm going to start considering it. I think this whole thing right now, the last seven sessions, uh, six sessions, I'm not calling it a fake out. The price is the price and it's very good action. And the MACD and Stochastic have responded. But I think that you'll give back a chunk of this at some point. Hey, I could be wrong. It wouldn't be the first time, but I am saying the 366 low, I think about two points higher, that's where you should start to find really good support if there is another pullback, and then we'll be looking at it. So now you can see the relationship, whereas this broke out, the E-mini broke out, and then it started to come back and wanted to test the rectangle. I'm saying because of the pattern that's formed, we might come back and test the top of the rectangle. And that top of the rectangle is at the bottom of the gap up bar of the 2nd of April, 5.52. Kind of that's where I'm going to be looking at it. So I'm not doing anything yet. And as I say, this would be something that for subscribers, I say it's in play. Expect a lot of volatility, but probably with slightly higher lows 
and higher highs, just reversing the pattern. But the big thing is, how does it test the high that was made the week of the 9th of, of March at 7.79? That's not a lot of, it's a big percentage, but not a lot of point movement. That's why I would prefer to get it lower down because you want to make a cup and even a handle pattern in this particular stage would be good. I just don't want to see it trading under uh, $5 in the next three weeks. Good. Okay. Uh, next thing we want to be looking at is um, looking no calls eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Love to get get something from somebody. Um, UK recession, Germany recession. GT says, who uh, is that? Um, is that a prediction? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, you know, just pushing the can down the road. Eventually, it always turns out that um, it's like me in my homework. Where as a youth, I still landed up cramming it all in just before. That's the same thing that's going to I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Uh, yeah, so um, I do recommend uh, Linda, uh, Linda Bradford Rashke's article. It's just really interesting about how she started trading and went from one thing to the other. Now she trades full time. Uh, she's just been a really a very fine a technical analyst. Uh, this is an uh, interview with Jay Yanthi. Gopalak Rishman and uh, in Stocks and Commodities magazine. Actually, this, this particular edition has some very good uh, articles. Inertia and momentum in the market, re reliable set of indicators, interview, V-Trade, um, the best chart, patent entry, better entry timing, adaptive EMA, just a, you know, a bunch of things. I, I've, I've been getting for years and years. I, I, I've used very little ever, but I'm just intrigued 
it just helps refine things. Okay, yes, uh, bonds made a high of 150 and 21 30 seconds on the 28th of March. Pull back moderately here. Yeah, this is a peak C in the weekly chart. There's a good chance if this market does have some kind of a consolidation near these all time highs, just to kind of tease you, get ready for a breakout to the upside. Yeah, bonds, uh, you can see bonds uh, pull back a little bit more. Yields could uh, actually, uh, money comes out of bonds and goes, whoops, sorry, the wrong way around. You can see bonds rally and yields come down a little bit as money comes out of stocks and goes into the so-called safety of bonds. But so far, I just think if you look at this, we're in a trading range, the TNX, TNX, which is the 10-year yield, um, came under the weekly 200-period moving average at uh, 25.30, and it's trading right now at 24.97, peak C, and a little bit of a bounce from the 23.56 low. Um, I, I think there's a bit of a bounce going, and I, I, the way it's looking, that monthly chart says, you know, well, yields are just stuck in a range in the lower range. They could rally, but for now they're stuck in the lower range. Let's see what happens. So just before we, we wrap up for the day, let's see where this is coming back into it. Yep, there's your peak D. There's your pullback. That's why I have that phantom C. Remember, these are techniques that I've developed over the many, many years. So uh, take care. The Dow's down 147. If the Dow closes towards the low of the day and drags the S&P down with it, then we've got ourselves a near-term timeout. Just be careful there. Stay tuned for Steve, Dave, and Tom. I'll be back with Tom a little later. Have a great day. Otherwise, see you tomorrow. Check out my opening call.